Well, we've come to Providence, Rhode Island, which is among many other things, the home of Keith and Rosemary Waldrop, Burning Deck Press. And we have some friends here, Lainey, hi. Hello. Kate, thanks for having us at your house. Mm -hmm. Anna. Hello. And Leanne Brown. So we're gonna talk about a poem by Keith Waldrop called Diminished Galleries. Kate's gonna read it and we're gonna talk about it. Diminished Galleries. Too old for vision, I must settle for dreams, specific forms of cloud. Body surrounded by body. Every sensation conceals a dream. Fresco, figurine, sculpture in low relief. A motor halo, a mental blue, cleft in the logical space, wilderness or rack. We have lived on a ladder to the window of a room to which the key is lost, words lost in the music. That is a beautiful poem. Mm. Um, let's go around twice and just say something about the poem. So, Lainey, wh wh where would you start? What do you want to say? Um, I'm thinking about the experience of losing memory and reaching in for a vision, inner vision. And that's really strong at the end. A line or two related to memory loss? Mm-hmm. Too old for vision, I must settle for dreams. It's about that. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then living on a ladder to a, to the window of a room to which the key is lost. Kate, your thought on this? Um, I am thinking about vision and the specific forms of cloud, which reminds me of how you'd see through cataracts, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Something really amazing about specific forms of clouds. Yeah. You know, um, the poet Mae Mae Bersenberger has a whole poem called Fog, in which she is sure that fog is a very precise thing. Yeah, it makes you think of the category of cloud and also the forms that are made by it. Yeah. And too old for vision is very affecting. You know, maybe clouds can create a form, which is to say an aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And that... Art goes on, if, even if you can't see much or everything's cloudy. Anna, your thought? I'm thinking about the prepositions in this poem. Um, they're doing a lot of directional and pointing work where the actual sort of noun forms aren't doing that work so much. Like there's a lot of fogginess and cloudiness and formlessness. Um, even like a, to use a sculpture in low relief, right? That means that the sculpture isn't even fully three-dimensional. It's like just sort of coming off of the, it's not like completely, you know, you can't go around it 360 degrees. So there's a lot of the vision that's being really complicated here um, and a lot of kind of dreaminess. So these prepositions of living on a ladder to the window of a room to which, um, and a couple of other places where that's happening, um, the, the language is precise where maybe the images aren't. Mm. Nice. Leanne, your thought? Well, I'm mainly drawn to the, the rhyme, like dream, figurine, the sound, um, rack, wilderness, words, lost in music. The musicality of it, the con condensed musicality of the poem. Mm -hmm. It's just the main feature to me, <laughs> that how it unfurls like that. I really love that comment, Leanna, and my thought is very much affiliated with that. The title, as soon as I saw the title, I thought, oh you know, diminished galleries, like there's a kind of, the, the speaker is admitting that the world has contracted a little and it's not what it used to be. And yet the poem proves, right, that all that precision is there, all the rhyming, the prepositions, everything is deployed in a way that makes this as fantastical and powerful a gallery as ever. There's a certain unnecessary modesty in the speaker saying things are declined when in fact the poem is is skinny as a rail and mm -hmm. ready to go poetically. Mm -hmm. Well we have time for one or two more th quick thoughts. Lainey back to you for a thought. I'm curious about what everybody's thoughts are on a motor halo, a mental blue. It's in italics, it's the only part in italics um, and it's mysterious, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it really is. It's more a question than a statement. Mm -hmm. It seems possible to me that the speaker might actually be in a gallery. 
um, and looking at some artworks that were made, you know, this is just like my own weird brain doing this, but um, like I was thinking about a gallery that would contain like Byzantine or like early Christian or maybe early Renaissance like sculpture and um, like altar pieces with those like really stark like gold leaf applied paints and like the um, lapis lazuli derived blue like those are like really really sharp pigmented colors mm -hmm. um, so a motor and um, you know the halos especially in those Byzantine paintings would have been like filled in not like the little circle it would have been like a filled in gold leaf applied thing so it feels like that's standing out like really starkly and a mental blue, if your vision is failing, that's such a poignant moment where it's this thing you retain and can keep with you. Mm. If, we, if we go into a gallery, we have this speaker going to a gallery with failed vision and certain cloudiness and maybe an imprecision, then it's all the more remarkable, right, that um, you settle for your own imagination if you can't be provided. Uh, directly anymore by the other artists. Uh, we have to end, but what, what does anybody make of words lost in the music? When I first read it, I thought, oh, that's so sad. But then I realized, no, that's an amazing situation. What is it? Right. When you're listening to music and you hear the, the words as music, right? I mean, right. Yeah. That's the way poetry yeah. is supposed to be, right? Yeah, and Motor Halo to be is the, like his collages. Like, it's like these modern contraptions with halos. You know, it's like these mm -hmm. old and new together. It's like these... His. Yeah, his collages. Yeah, I like a that. gallery of his yeah. collages, I see. Yeah, he may be with in his own gallery. Blues and the browns and all this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but for, to me it seems... It's the emanation of an engine. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Nice. Yeah. That's great. I th it's, we only took a few minutes, but I'm, I, think, I think we got, to, got somewhere in talking about this poem. So thank you all very much. Thanks. Thank you. If you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.